The grist mill in the town of Freedom has been here since 1834. The setting is a picture of tranquility. But that mill is now the home of what is arguably the hottest, buzziest restaurant in Maine, the Lost Kitchen. Erin French is the owner and chef, and to understand her story, you have to go back to when she was growing up in Freedom. At the age of 12, she started working at her parents' diner, cleaning up crumbs and eggshells. Two years later, she was cooking. 14 years old, and you're the cook yeah. in a diner. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Um, you know, if you'd asked me then, I probably would have said no. But I was probably more in it because I wanted to get a bike. And all of a sudden, it was like, wow, I was getting paid, and I was getting paid cash. And it was like $10 an hour, which was huge money for me way back then. And then I kind of started to make my own way with it, where if dad would leave, I would start tweaking the dishes a little bit, and then I started to have fun. And you were good. I mean, you were a legitimately competent, if not skilled, short order cook? I guess so. Yeah, I mean, there was no choice. It's like you had to get it done. The tickets kept coming in, so figure it out or go cry in the walk-in. <laughs> Erin French says when she was in her early 20s, she ran away from food for a while, but she kept coming back. You know, I just started to find love for food and find it interesting and beautiful. And I saw, started to see it in a different light, that it didn't have to be diner food, that it could be some other vision. And the first Lost Kitchen was created in an apartment in Belfast. You had a four burner electric stove. Right. You'd invite people over, friends at first, on a Saturday night, say, I'm going to make you dinner. That was the beginning. That was the beginning, yeah. And I basically put out a glass jar for donations, and I, I just decided that I wanted to make food my life, and I didn't have all this money to go out and go to school or to start up a restaurant, so it was kind of this grassroots way to just say, I'm going to open my apartment doors, and I'm going to really work on my culinary education, and if you guys just help me pay for the ingredients and just eat whatever I put on the table, then maybe we can do something here. And you know, So I tag-sailed for some dishes and put together some tables and bought some cheap t chairs and you know, handmade some napkins and instant restaurant. You then had some upheaval in your life, went through a nasty divorce, we're left with basically nothing. Mm -hmm. So you reinvented yourself when you came across an ad for an Airstream trailer that was for sale. What happened then? So, kind of decided that I didn't need walls, that maybe it could be wheels, it could be anything, that I, I could keep going, even though I'd lost the restaurant, which was just totally devastating. Um, moved home with my parents and found the Airstream and thought, okay, well, what if we bring back the supper club? Wielding a sledgehammer, she started ripping out everything inside that Airstream trailer. Gutted it, built out a galley kitchen, I threw a cot in the back so I could sleep in it at night, I pulled it close enough to my parents' house so I could get Wi-Fi, <laughs> and, um, you know, gave it a shot until I found where I could be next. Obviously, the reason that both of these ventures worked, the Lost Kitchen in Belfast and then the pop-up cooking out of, the, out of the trailer, was that you were a really good cook. Had you ever had any formal instruction no. in cooking? No. You know, I'm not formal, and I'm always messing up, and I'm always making mistakes, but that's how I continue to, to be better, is like through every mistake I've made in the kitchen, sometimes I find a better dish because it takes me, I have to figure out how to fix it. I have to figure out how to get better. As a kid, Erin French used to walk past the old grist mill on her way to Girl Scout meetings. When the mill was renovated, the idea hit her. She would open a restaurant here. I thought that maybe this would be more like a cafe. Breakfast and lunch and free Wi-Fi and egg sandwiches. <laughs> And because I thought no one's going to drive out here. I used to cook dinner in town, and sure, that was easy, but um, you know, coming here, who's going to drive all the way out here? Freedom is a sleepy town with just over 700 residents, and in a lot of ways, the idea of opening a restaurant here was crazy. And yet, improbably, the Lost Kitchen was a success from the moment it opened in 2014. The idea of breakfast sandwiches quickly gave way to dinners four nights a week. Customers do not order off a menu. They eat the various courses Aaron creates, and the meals vary from night to night. The philosophy is the restaurant runs on love 
and the freshest ingredients it can get. I read these stories about how you operate and it's really unconventional. You sound sort of like a jazz musician. I mean, it might be two hours before the restaurant opens and you still don't know what you're going to prepare that night and you haven't even really turned on the burner necessarily. Yeah. You're still trying to think about it and figure out, all right, what goes best with what right. I've got? Well, every day it's kind of like a, you know, it's a challenge every day because I don't drive the menu. I don't say, this is what I feel like making today and let's go shopping. I see what comes in and then I go, okay, what do I do with this? I have to figure it out because I'm not the star here, it's the ingredients and so I have to pay attention to those, I have to pay attention to the weather, it's a hot day can't be making a dish. You know, every day has to make sense. Since it opened, the Lost Kitchen had done well and received glowing reviews. Even so, no one was prepared for what happened at midnight on April 1st when the restaurant started taking reservations for its 2017 season, which runs from May to December. At midnight, I looked out the window and there were car lights and there were people coming in with warm loaves of bread and lists of reservations and the phone meanwhile is going, you know, just off the hook and off the hook and all three lines going crazy to the point where there were alarms going off in the basement because our security system was not able to dial out and say everything's okay. In the first 24 hours, more than 10,000 calls came in from people trying to get a reservation at the restaurant. What was your reaction? Um, you know, there was a moment, I think it was nausea first, and then kind of like joy, and then nausea again, of a little bit, you know, a little more fear than I think excitement. We're at a whole different business problem of how do you feed the need when the need is bigger than you're able to provide. And, you know, we're small. It's every night it's me on the line, and it's my mother in the wine cellar, it's my sister on the phones, it's my best friends, you know, working working in the dining room and I was like, we're human, we have two hands and we have three phone lines and oh my God, <laughs> so, I am uh, still digesting. When people come in here, they're gonna expect the sun, the moon and the stars. Yeah, I know. Make you a little uncomfortable? It does, yeah. I'm, I can tell you there are plenty of sleepless nights and every night before the door opens, my heart is pounding because you just, you don't know and you have this fear of like, I'm just human and I can only accomplish so much and as the expectations grow, it's like, when are we gonna, when are we gonna find that line where they're unhappy now? And when am I gonna let them down? And so I, I always fear that and I think if I, maybe it's a good thing that I continue to fear that because it makes me work harder to try not to.